Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're taking a look at AMD's newly refreshed Radeon RX 6650 XT, which is really just an overclock 6600 XT with faster memory. There's really not much more to say. The cores are clocked almost 2% higher, and the GDDR6 memory is now 9% faster, both of which have increased the board power rating by 13% to 180 watts. Now, you might think, well, that's okay, a slightly faster 6600 XT, it's not a bad thing, even if it is only likely to be around 5% faster. On the other hand, though, the 6600 XT is almost a year old at this point, and it was heavily delayed to begin with, as the first RDNA 2-based hardware had arrived around November of 2020. Moreover, we are expecting RDNA 3-based products to land before year's end, meaning the 6600 XT replacement is almost certainly less than 12 months away at this point. Still, despite all of that, for potential 6600 XT shoppers, an extra 5, maybe 10% performance, that'd be welcomed. If free, of course, and of course, it's not free. Quite surprisingly, despite a sharp downturn in graphics card pricing due to a significant drop off in demand, in a rather baffling move, AMD has decided to refresh much of their existing RDNA 2 lineup while also jacking up the price in the process. So if you thought Nvidia failed to read the room with their TI update, or TIE update, you'll have no idea what to make of this move from AMD. While many gamers have been desperately waiting for graphics cards to finally hit, or at least get very near the MSRP, and after having waited so long, they're now starting to get there. But AMD has decided you're not getting a 6600 XT for $380, it's now $400 US. And admittedly, that's not a huge increase, but I would have thought worst case we'd be looking at the same MSRP gamers were promised about a year ago now. The 6750 XT and 6950 XT price hikes are even worse, but we'll cover those procs in another video shortly. But really, come on AMD, you can't be this clueless. You'd think for a company already struggling, and I do mean struggling, to win over gamers to the Radeon brand, they'd want to retain some credibility by honouring the original MSRP. And don't tell me they can't, they're basically doing it right now with the 6600 XT regularly available at or just above $380 US, which is the MSRP. Anyway, I'll talk more about pricing and all that nonsense towards the end of the video. For now, let's check out performance to see if the Radeon RX 6650 XT has any surprises for us. On hand for testing, I have the PowerColor Hellhound Spectral White and Sapphire Nitro Plus models, and I've used the Spectral White to represent the 6650 XT performance. All AMD and NVIDIA GPUs have been tested at the official clock specifications, so no factory overclocking, and all of the data in this video is fresh, was gathered in the past week or so using the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32GB of dual rank dual channel DDR4-3200CL14 memory on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard using the latest BIOS supporting a GSA 1207 microcode. In total, I've tested 10 games at 1080p and 1440p, so let's get into the data. Starting with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege Extraction, we see a 6% performance jump from the 6600 XT to the 6650 XT, so about what we were expecting. This has allowed the 6650 XT to match the RTX 3060, so not exactly an exciting increase, but if it were free, I'd take it. The RTX 3060 still maintained its small lead at 1440p, and this time we're looking at a 7% increase for the 6650 XT over the original 6600 XT. The improvement to the average frame rate in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p is pretty underwhelming. Here we're looking at a 4% boost for the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT, though that did make it 13% faster than the RTX 3060, so I guess there is that. Then at 1440p, the gains are really much the same, 5% here making it 8% faster than the GeForce RTX 3060. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, here the 6600 XT already really owned the RTX 3060, offering a massive 22% performance increase, so the 6650 XT just blows it out of the water further by a 34% margin. This is also the biggest gain we've seen over the 6600 XT as the 6650 XT was 10% faster. 
and that margin was slightly reduced at 1440p to 7%, but that meant it was still 22% faster than the RTX 3060, so a good win here for AMD. Next we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we're looking at an 8% increase for the 6650 XT at 1080p over the original model, making it 10% faster than the RTX 3060. Then 1440p, the margin between the 6600 XT and its 6650 XT was much the same. A 7% increase here allowing the refreshed version to beat the RTX 3060 by a 6% margin. Hitman 3 sees an 8% increase for the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT, and that meant it was a massive 21% faster than the RTX 3060. So a good win here for AMD, even if the new GPU is underwhelming relative to the original model. Then at 1440p, we're looking at an 8% increase, uh, jumping up from 83 FPS on average to 90 FPS, and that meant that the 6650 XT was now 22% faster than the RTX 3060, and just 8% slower than the RTX 3060 Ti. Moving on to the Far Cry 6 results, we find very strong performance at 1080p using the higher quality preset. The 6650XT was only 4% faster than the original model, but that saw it average 157 FPS, and that's a 30% increase over the RTX 3060. And that margin remained pretty well the same at 1440p. Here the 6650XT was 27% faster than the RTX 3060, though the gap to the 6600XT did increase, now 9%, which is quite a significant increase compared to what was seen at 1080p. The F1 2021 results are quite interesting as here we found no difference in performance between the 6650 XT and its 6600 XT. I'm not sure if this is down to the use of ray tracing, which possibly creates a bottleneck that the extra memory bandwidth of the 6650 XT can't overcome. Not sure on that one, but I did double check these results and they were accurate. And the same situation is seen at 1440p. Again, the 6650 XT is really no faster than the original 6600 XT. Next we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here we're back to extremely mild gains. 6% at 1080p, making the new model 18% faster than the RTX 3060. And much the same was also seen at 1440p, a 7% uplift here for the new model over the 6600 XT, making it 14% faster than the RTX 3060. And the second last game that we're going to use for testing here is Dying Light 2, and thankfully we are near the end of this very boring benchmark session. Here we find a 7% boost for the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT, and that meant it was 17% faster than the RTX 3060. The margin was much the same at 1440p, an 8% boost over the 6600 XT, and a 20% increase over the RTX 3060. And finally, we have Halo Infinite, and here we find a 6% increase for the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT, and that meant it was just 9% faster than the RTX 3060 at 1080p. Then at 1440p, the 6650 XT was 8% faster than the original model, and 10% faster than the RTX 3060. Now, when it comes to power consumption, the 6650 XT is quite efficient, only increasing total system usage by 2% from the 6600 XT, and that meant power usage was 5% less than that of the RTX 3060. So, not a significant difference there when compared to the GeForce competition, but the 6650 XT was faster while using less power. So performance wise, the Radeon RX 6650 XT looked good compared to the RTX 3060 across the 10 games tested, but it wasn't exactly exciting sitting next to the 6600 XT. Anyway, to get a good idea of how they stack up, let's take a look at the 10 game average before moving into our cost per frame analysis. At 1080p, the 6650 XT was on average 6% faster than the 6600 XT, so pretty well exactly what I expected to find based on the specs. Given the MSRP has also increased by 5%, getting 6% more performance on average makes this somewhat of a pointless release in my opinion. And it's worth noting that in my recent 50 game head-to-head -head comparison between the 6600 XT and RTX 3060, the Radeon GPU is 3% faster at 1080p, yet here it's 10% faster, which is quite a big difference. There are a few reasons though for this discrepancy. Firstly, Nvidia does a better job of optimizing performance across a wide range of games, thanks to a much larger operating budget. And the 50 game test also includes a number of ray traced enabled titles, the most notable of which being Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and Resident Evil Village, where the 6600 XT was over 20% slower. 
Additionally, there were also 17 games where the margin was 3% or less, and this reduces the significance of the big wins in tiles such as Watch Dogs Legion, for example. Ideally, had I gathered the 50 game data before I began updating my testing with the 5800X 3D for these day one reviews, I could have better selected the titles used for this 10 game sample. This is something I will look to optimize over the coming weeks, so for now just keep in mind that the 10 game sample is a bit more favorable towards AMD compared to the big 50 game benchmark. Though that's probably not going to be as much of an issue for those of you who don't care about ray tracing, and of course if you do care about ray tracing then Nvidia becomes the obvious option anyway. The 6600 XT is just 5% faster than the RTX 3060 at 1440p, and the 6650 XT increased that margin to 12%, so a decent performance advantage there for AMD, especially given the Radeon GPUs are cheaper right now, and in fact let's move on to take a look at that. Okay, time to look at the current pricing and break down the cost per frame. I've included the 6650 XT at the $400 US MSRP, but since the 6600 XT is currently selling for $400, and the 6650 XT is meant to be $20 more, I think it makes sense in my opinion to compare the 6650 XT with the 6600 XT at that $20 premium, so in this case that would bump it up to $420. Now, assuming that the 6650 XT will come in at $420, that would make it virtually identical to the 6600 XT in terms of cost per frame, which does make sense given that it's meant to be a 5% increase for on average 6% more performance according to our data. And that places it on par with the cost per frame of the 6700 XT, which is currently at $500, and a few percent more expensive than the 6600 per frame. So as expected, it slots into the current Radeon lineup, offering the same level of value, so nothing to see here, people. Now, when compared to Nvidia's offering, the 6650 XT does look great, and that's largely helped by the recent increase in price for the RTX 3060. In fact, just last week when I looked at 3060 pricing, there were a few models down around $400 US, which would reduce the cost per frame to $4.25, making the RTX 3060 about 10% more expensive per frame, not the insane 32% increase we find today. Though I did also note in the 50 game benchmark that the 6600 XT was priced much more competitively here in Australia. Humorously though, the opposite is now true, which just speaks to how incredibly volatile GPU pricing is right now. Currently the RTX 3060 is selling for 600 AUD, while the 6600 XT can be had for $550 AUD, so that's a $50 difference down from the $80 difference seen last week. Still that means locally the 3060 works out to be 20% more expensive per frame than the 6600 XT, at least based on our 10 game sample data. Now moving on to 1440p paints a prettier picture let's say for the 6650 XT as here it was 9% faster than the 6600 XT on average, and this reduced the cost per frame at $420 to $6.66, meaning it was a 3% saving from the original 6600 XT. I know, an amazing deal right? Basically that brings the 6650 XT in line with the 6700 XT and 6600, and that means it's much better value than the RTX 3060 at $480, which amounts to a 25% saving when comparing the cost per frame. Now as I mentioned earlier, I do have two 6650 XT models on hand, and let's start by looking at the thermal performance of PowerColor's Hellhound Spectral White. This model saw a peak temperature of just 62 degrees after an hour long loop of the F1 2021 benchmark, and that's particularly impressive given the fans only spun at 1150 RPM, resulting in a virtually silent graphics card that couldn't be heard over our case fans. In terms of clock specifications, the cores on average clocked at 2715 MHz, with the memory at 2178 MHz, which equates to a transfer speed of 17.24 gigabits per second. Now the other model on hand was the high-end Sapphire Nitro Plus, which is physically a much larger product, though it still only has two fans. Anyway, this model also peaked at 62 degrees, which is interesting, though quite remarkably it did so with a fan speed of just 750 RPM. So this is about as close to silent as you'll get from an actively cooled graphics card. As for the clock speed, the cores again clocked at 2715 MHz on average, with the memory at 2178 MHz, which again results in a transfer speed of 17.42 gigabits per second. Well, there you have it. 
The Radeon RX 6650 XT really is a non-event in my opinion. Yeah, it's a little bit faster, which is nice, but it also costs a little bit more. So ultimately, who cares? It barely strengthens AMD's position in terms of cost per frame. It's a few percent better than what we already had. But realistically, what the 6650 XT offers was only a mild overclock away with the 6600 XT. Now, had AMD introduced the 6650 XT with the original 6600 XT MSRP, so just slotted in at the current 6600 XT pricing, I'd still be very underwhelmed and it'd be hard to understand what the point was. But for those of you looking at buying a 6600 XT late in the product cycle, it would have been a nice little upgrade. Frankly, an official price hike for Navi 23 Silicon, even a small 5% increase, seems a bit daft to me given what's happened over the past few years. As I said earlier, this sort of thing isn't how AMD wins gamers over to the Radeon brand. If anything, it's a turnoff, and just because Nvidia does crap like this doesn't mean AMD can or should. Personally, I think it's yet another mishandling of the RDNA 2 series. The only positive here being that the RX 6600 and 6700 series have continued to drop in price over the past weeks and months, and are currently in a really good position relative to the RTX 3060 and 3070 range. For example, exactly one month ago, I compared the RTX 3070 and 6700 XT, and at the time, the 6700 XT was priced at $600 US and the RTX 3070 at $750 US. Today, though, the GeForce GPU has dropped by just $20, while we've seen a $100 reduction for the 6700 XT. So that means about a month ago, the 6700 XT was 20% cheaper than the RTX 3070, while today it's 32% cheaper. That's a big movement there for AMD. Previously, I said I'd go with the 6700 XT due to that big price saving. So today there's really no question I'd purchase the 6700 XT over the RTX 3070. And likewise, I'd purchase the new 6650 XT over the RTX 3060. Ultimately, the 6650 XT is a product that I have no real feelings for. I'm not upset about it. I'm really not happy with it. I just basically don't care. It's more of the same, really. So whatever. If anything, I'm just pleased the 6600 series is down near the MSRP. I suppose that's not amazing news for a year old product, but it is amazing given what the last 12 months have looked like, if that makes sense. Anyway, this really was a very boring video to make, so I, for one, am super glad that we're done here. If you happen to like this super boring video, then, uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. You must be having a pretty slow day. But also, I would appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, drop your comment below, giving me your thoughts on this refreshed graphics card from AMD. Also, if you'd like to get more hardware unbox goodness, we have Float Plane and Patreon. Links for either of those are in the video description. You'll get some pretty cool perks. Tim and I do a monthly live stream. I'm sure we'll be talking about these cards and your thoughts on them in this month's live stream for Float Plane and Patreon members. Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content, and we have an exclusive Discord server. Really cool place to chat with the Harbour Box community there. Like-minded people, Tim and I are in there as well. It's usually most of you just giving me a hard time and posting memes and stuff, but it's a whole lot of fun. Anyway, if you're interested, check it out. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this super boring video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>